Many people know me as a strong, confident, always positive person. Some people even think I'm a little bit cool, you know? <laughs> and while these things might be true, the journey to finding my truest self almost shut my light off completely. I come from the beautiful coastal province of KZN. I grew up in a little POC community called Red Hill, where I spend most of my days outside playing soccer barefoot, falling out of mango trees. It was perfect, you know? I'm the middle child of three girls, and we lived with my mom and dad. My dad always said I was the son that he never had, because in my T-shirt, my baggy shorts, all I wanted to do was whatever my male cousins were doing. I was different, and everybody around me made sure that I felt it too. So imagine my shock one Saturday afternoon, I come home from playing outside to my mother frantically packing a bag. I kept asking, what's wrong? Where's dad? Like, what is happening? Before she rushes out the door, she just looks at me and she said, your dad's in hospital and it's so bad he might die. I couldn't process anything she had just said. I'd seen my dad a couple hours earlier, and he was perfectly fine. Fine enough to argue with me about me wanting to go to a dance event in Johannesburg, which he shut down immediately. So I'm sitting there like, I'm 13. How does my big, happy, healthy, positive dad just disappear? I don't even think I knew what death meant. A little while later, I take my then four-year-old sister and we go to bed. We were woken up really early the Sunday morning by my aunt asking us to get dressed. While she brushes my little sister's hair, she looks at me and softly says, Cords, he's gone. I nod my head to say, okay, what else am I supposed to say? The only person who made me feel like I belonged was gone. I didn't even get to say goodbye. This moment completely changed my life. I was too young to understand how, but I felt the shift. My best friend was gone, but I barely cried. I immediately knew I had to be strong for my family. The years that follow see me grow up really fast often getting into trouble at school for having an opinion, or just not being the typical lady that everyone expected of me. I was different, always felt a little bit out of place. So I figured if I don't take things too seriously, if I make them laugh, maybe they'll like me a little bit more. That was much easier than explaining how my family life was breaking down, how my mom wasn't coping, and it affected her kids. How we needed our mother, but she needed my dad. All this caused me to have super deep intuition and empathy for everything and everyone around me, often at my own expense. So at 21, I packed the bags, 600 rand in my pocket. I decided I'm moving to Joburg to chase the very thing my dad and I fought about, <laughs> dance. <laughs> One of my fondest and scariest moments was getting an opportunity to open the Sama Awards. Yes, yes. Yeah? Amazing. But it falls on the day that I'm writing accounting. Uh -oh. Shh, come on. So at the time, I'm studying a BCom, teaching dance to pay for it. I call my mother who had just told me, if I'm leaving, I'm never coming back to Durban, or she'll see me in two days, right? And I tell her my dilemma, and I, I'm so confused in this moment, and I'm expecting backlash. And ever so still, she just said, Court, I trust you to make the right decision. So I danced at the summers. <laughs> I chose to stand in my truth, no matter how terrifying it was. And it really was a terrifying thing because I struggled to get work. I'm not the type of female that the industry looks for, just too different. 
I look different, I sound different, the way I walk and I talk, all different. My dress code, the way I dance, my sexuality, all different. So I stand here today, an award-winning three-time essay breaking champ <laughs> with profiles and documentaries on platforms from CNN to DSTV. I've turned my passions into paychecks and toured the world DJing, choreographing, and performing on some of the biggest stages alongside some of the biggest artists. I run an entertainment company that's one of the sponsors for this event today. <laughs> And I'm also on the journey to qualifying for the 2024 Olympic Games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I stand here today being loved for all the things society taught me I'd be hated for. Yes. I stand here today still different, still a misfit, but so proud. Yes. My name is Courtney Paul, and I'm a proud, proud African woman. Yes.